We are now seeing more and more anglers switching over to fishing with rod and line tactics. Let's face it, through winter, if you can fish with a, a bomb or a feeder, it can be a little bit more comfortable, you know, especially when the weather is a little bit harsh. And if you're not into your pole fishing, then this is a video that I want to share with you because I'm going to show you the tactics, the, the kit and the approaches that I used through the Winter League this winter where I fish right here at Lindome Lakes through the bomb and feeder only Winter League. It's a fantastic way of approaching your winter fishing it's so much easier and quicker to set up and let's face it the prep time is vastly reduced in comparison to how it would be if you were, you were pole fishing so let me show you the kit I'm going to show you the approach and more importantly the baits that I used through a very enjoyable winter league now at the current time of filming it's still very early in April and let's face it most fisheries the water is still really cold you know it is still quite chilly so these tactics whilst I use these going through through the winter they are still very relevant going through early spring as well so the kit I'm going to be showing you first I'm going to be showing the rods the reels and more importantly the rigs as well because I know a lot of people are interested in the types of rigs that we use how I really really keep it simple and to be quite honest for the whole winter I could literally have just set two rods up and they would have done me for the whole series. Now the tattle here that I've used is obviously it's matrix, I am a matrix angler but it's the details of the rod that I want to share with you more than anything because these styles of rods are obviously available in different brands all, all around the world but it's the actual key details I just want to tell you the reason why I've picked them okay so as regards the bomb, to cover most of my bomb fishing, I basically just use a nine foot, this is an XRC, uh, it's, it's a nine foot rod, and that is purely because, as you can see, probably with the nature of this lake behind me, on the vast majority of the of the lakes here, you haven't got a long cast. So if you're fishing at a venue, or you're gonna be tackling lakes that are up to 30, 40 meters wide, and that's the maximum sort of cast that you're gonna need, a nice soft nine foot rod like this is ideal because you don't need a long rod for casting a long way. The actual gram rating on it, because people do ask about casting weights, which obviously refers to the strength of the rod and, and, and the action of it. This particular one is 30 gram, so it is quite a light rod. And that's because on these lakes, there are lots and lots of F1s and smaller carp as well. And a rod like this is ideal. So a nice nine foot rod, I'll couple that with a, a 3000 reel. That's all you need. You know, you're not casting a long way. You're not having to reel back vast distances or anything like that and it's just really nice and compact on a nine foot rod so a three thousand reel or even a two and a half thousand size reel is ideal with such a short rod like this it's just a really nice balanced setup now again because you're not casting a long way there's no need for any fancy shock leaders or anything like that so this is just basically eight pound mono that's on the reel no shock leaders this is eight pound horizon and that is just straight through to the rig itself. So there's no fancy shock leader knots or anything like that. You just don't need them. Just a quick word on the actual strength and breaking strain of, of the real line. I, in previous years, have used six pound horizon line. However, the horizon line is quite low diameter for its actual strength. So six pound line is 0 0.18 in diameter. So because it's such low diameter, I've just really, through last winter, just beefed it up to eight pound. That means that that is still quite a fine diameter, but you've got that extra assurance of an eight pound strength breaking strain. Because sometimes if you're playing fish near features close in, there might be fish around your platform leg and stuff. It's just an extra little bit of a abrasion resistance there to uh, it's just a bit of an insurance policy now the rig itself the bombs that I like to use are these five gram they are the five gram pellet bombs they're ideal for this I like to use five gram however they are available in seven and a half gram and ten gram if it was windy or if I was casting a little bit further I may have to step that up to a ten gram version but that is very specific to the swim and the peg that you're faced with now the actual rig itself is basically it's just the bombs free running on the line and then I actually use three rubber stoppers and those are there basically obviously to stop the bomb but because I use stoppers like that it means that I can actually move these stoppers and that means that I can adjust the length of the hook length now this is something that I'll talk about in a moment when I show you my prep side of preparing for, for my winter fishing but by having these three rubber stoppers it just means that I can 
slide them up and down and if I do want to adjust the length of the hook length then that's something that I can do very very easily and what you'll find is that if you only use one rubber you might find that sometimes when you cast depending on the bond that you're using one rubber might not be enough so that's why I use three it just makes sure that it's not going to slip on the cast or when you're playing fish so three rubber stoppers do the job perfectly and that just enables me to adjust the length of the hook length and that is it a super simple rig I always attach my hook length loop to loop so the bottom of that rig is then just a loop which goes into the loop of the hook length loop to loop style and that is it and that is a rig that I can use on any lake that I fish here at this fishery and fisheries up and down the country it's a super super simple bomb setup now as regards the method feeder setup it's again super super simple and anybody who knows me knows that I like to keep things as simple as possible if I can actually get away with it and that's what you're going to see with my choice of rod for this style of fishing basically most of the lakes here you're going to have a maximum cast of sometimes 25 meters 30 meters however there is one of the lakes where you might need to go out to 40 meters and that's why for my method feeder approach I actually select an 11 foot rod okay so usually obviously when you're fishing with a bomb you lose feeding pellets so that automatically restricts how far out you're actually feeding with a bomb and that's why I like to use a nine foot rod when I'm bomb fishing because you're not going out too far with a method feeder I might need to go further out into the lake I might need to go searching and that's why I've picked an 11 foot rod because that's going to give me more flexibility I can fish it at really short range an 11 foot rod is really nice for under arming onto a short line or down a margin but it's just that extra little bit longer which is going to allow you to cast that little bit further out to 40 plus meters if you need to so it means I've got one rod that I can use on no matter which lake I draw on it's just kind of trying to keep things a little bit simpler and a little bit more flexible I've got that coupled again with the 3000 reel even on an 11 foot rod a 3000 reel is just balanced really really nicely and again I've got the 8 pound horizon line on there I don't need any shock leaders because there's no big casts even if I've got to go out to 40 meters 45 meters you still don't need a shock leader for that so this is eight pound line going straight through to the method feeder now this fishery stipulates you've got to use free running feeders and to be quite honest I'm using free running feeders on lots of different venues now you know in past recent years I, I, I have preferred an elasticated feeder and on some occasions that I think that is best but I do use a free running feeder on lots of occasions now the style of feeder that I've used all winter again the one that I prefer is the open method style and as you can imagine because we're going through winter fish are eating less they're moving about less that needs to be reflected in the, in the size of your feeder choice so you know through winter certainly early spring this time of year we're just scaling down just scale your feeder down a little bit and that's why this size feeder is perfect and that is it it's just on there with a quick change adapter at the bottom so you can quickly and easily change your hook lens and that is the setup now as regards clipping up and all that sort of thing I'll be absolutely honest with you and say that 50% of the time when I'm fishing through the colder months I don't always clip up on some venues I do but for this style of fishing fishing for F1s if I don't have to clip up it it's better for me because obviously when the rig's out there you can undo your drag and you're not worried about a fish taking uh, it can take line obviously if you haven't got a line clip but it's more about being mobile you know on lots and lots of matches through winter with a method feeder I've found quite often you're having to move around you're actually searching for fish and even if you can catch one or two fish they spook easy so they quite often just move they move to one side or a little bit further out and so quite often I'm not clipped up and you're just dotting about as you say with a method feeder just going searching for fish and that is the setup two rods that are going to cover so many different scenarios fishing different swims on different lakes another really enjoyable aspect to this style of fishing is how simple you can keep your bait tray I'm a massive fan of this you know and and even if somebody near you is catching fish you really got a pretty good idea of what bait they're using because we're only really using about two or three different baits as you can expect when we're fishing with a method feeder you're going to have micro pellets on your on your side tray at the fishery here you've got to use their fishery only pellets but if we were allowed to use our own I would just go down the, F, the Sonobates F1 pellet or the um, or the thin perfect micro pellets great pellets for the job but here you've got to use the fishery only ones we are using these on a method feeder and that's something that I did on virtually every single match however you have also got the option of once these are obviously been soaked you can squeeze them into 
balls as well and feed them by hand. Lots of bomb and feeder leagues or rod only leagues do allow you to do that. Obviously check with the rules first. So you are allowed to feed via a catapult and you are allowed to feed by hand as well. So in this case, and on some of the matches, I was actually feeding micro pellets in small balls like that down the margin for later on in the match. So we've got micro pellets. The next bait is the hard pellet and in winter I generally find that on these F1 type venues we just tend to scale the pellet down a little bit. There are obviously exceptions to the rule. In summer months if you're on one of the bigger lakes here you might be feeding 8 mil pellets but in winter and certainly through this winter I've found that 6 mil hard pellets just loose fed somewhere for your main bomb line that was all I needed. And then the final bait really for feeding is the good old humble sweet corn. It's obviously a very, very universal bait across lots of different venues. You can loose feed it by hand, you can loose feed it via catapult, and obviously you can fish single or multiple grains of corn if you're fishing for bigger fish. It's just a super robust, but more importantly, in my opinion, a very, very visual bait, which is great in winter. And that is really it for the baits that we were feeding. The only other baits that I would have on my side tray for every match are some wafters you know for fishing on the method feeder and generally you know I generally find that if you have to fish of all different sizes smaller F1s and stocky fish the smaller micro size uh, wafters can be can be great but if you want to be a little bit more selective or if you are fishing for, for proper carp then that is when we might step it up to a six mil and that was really the only two options that I really had on my bait tray all through last winter now the other main bait that I haven't got here today and it's and that's really because I, I haven't really had much success with it this winter and I haven't heard of many people catching fish with it going through last winter and that is the humble slice of bread. You know, I do know people that have caught on bread through, the, through winter but certainly this winter for some reason there haven't been quite as many fish caught on it so I would normally have a couple of slices of bread with me where I can just put two or three discs on a hair rig with a bomb and just search around just like you do when you're pole fishing, when you're dobbing, when you're actually looking for fish and that is it. That is all I had on my side tray going right the way through the full match series. I'm sure you'll agree that everything here is really just stripped back and it's just kept really, really nice and simple, which is part of the enjoyment. As regards the actual preparation side of things, the bait side of it, you don't really need to do anything. One thing you might want to do is soak your micro pellets the night before. That's something that's very much down to personal preference. But on most occasions, I'm quite happy doing that as soon as I get to my peg on the morning. The tin of corn is just a tin of corn. I always carry two tins with me because sometimes you have got to find that you've got to feed a little bit heavier and the pellets the hard pellets are straight out of the bag anyway and the wafters look after themselves as regards the kit you've seen the rods you've seen the reels they're already set up at home so literally you're ready within 15 20 minutes of actually arriving at your peg the all important hook lengths now you see my bomb rig and the reason why that enables me to be a lot more flexible as regards altering the length of the hook length it means that because I can actually slide those rubbers further up the line to have a longer tail like that it means that I only need to tie up one length of method feeder or one type of hook length all my hook lengths in here with my hair rigs on with all my bayonets my bands my speed stops they are all four inch and that means that I have only got one lot of prep to do because I can use these four inch hook lengths on the bomb rig and if I want a longer hook length than four inch, which we normally do when we're bomb fishing, I can just slide those rubbers up and it means that that is the only box that I need to top up before every match. But to be quite honest with you, I like to spend two or three hours before the league starts, topping all these up, all the ones that I think I'm gonna need, and that has kept me going right the way through the series, which is, again, it's made it a lot more enjoyable. Now, as regards the actual approach, this is something that a lot of people ask, because when you're faced with a peg like the one I've got here behind me, you've got lots of different options. So let me just give you an example of how you can tackle a peg like this. Now on a peg like this, you've got several different options as you can see, and you've got to think about where the fish might back off to, where the fish might be at the start, and where they might be at the end of the match as well. And if you've got any areas where fish may be passing through, then that's something that you just need to give a bit of consideration to. So I've obviously got my peg here. I've got a nice long margin to the right, which is, you know, and the left really. I don't know if it's clean of snags and stuff, but that's something that I check with the bomb first. So when I get to my peg, if I'm not sure what it's like, I'll just cast a bomb down there and find out how clean or dirty it might be because if there are any snags there I want to find that out before the start of the match not when I've been feeding it for two hours and you drop a bomb on it simple yeah we've got some open water 
So obviously there will be somewhere where I'll be feeding the six mil pellets. I'll probably do that somewhere towards the left, somewhere over here, about halfway. I've then got the option of casting the method feeder anywhere along that far bank, assuming there isn't anybody pegged over there. So you can drop a method feeder at any stage along that far bank. We can obviously go to the left if we want, but as you can see to my right, that is where it's going out to the middle part of the lake. That's the main body of the lake. There are only two pegs to my left, so that's pretty much a dead end. So if our end fish are going to be moving in and out, you'd think it's going to be through this gap here. So that is the area where I'd feel a lot more confident of fish coming through or going by, you know, left or right basically. So that is an area that I'm going to leave alone for a little bit later on. I would try and catch what I can here. But then if the fish are going to continue feeding, then that's great. You carry on doing what you're doing. But if the fish back off, they obviously can go to the left. So we can search to the left. But I think personally on this peg, they're probably more inclined to go to the right because that's going out to the main body of the lake. So that's the bit where I would consider chasing fish out to if that makes sense. If there wasn't anybody pegged over there, that's a nice point there that we can tackle a little bit later on. And then you've got a nice long margin here where because that is the direction of the main body of the lake, then I'd feel much more confident that if, if fish aren't there early on or at the beginning, then they will be more inclined to come into this margin from that direction. All of the tattle, the baits and the approaches that I've shared with you in this video are transferable across a wide range of commercial venues up and down the country. And if this is a style of fishing that you want to try and up your game even further on, then you might want to head on over to improvemyfishing.com where we've got a wide range of online fishing courses for you to check out that can hopefully fast track your understanding of this style of fishing. And if you're interested in taking part in any bomb and feeder events next winter, right here at this fishery they are launching the ultimate bomb and feeder championship which starts in November and that's a series of qualifiers right here where you could qualify and end up fishing in the grand final for £10,000. If that's an event that you're interested in head on over to the Lindome Lakes chat room Facebook page or give Lindome Lakes Fishery a call for more information. I really hope you've enjoyed this insight into the tactics and the methods and the baits that I've been using through last winter. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please give this one a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.